Dear friends, welcome to Udyami Mitra portal. I am here to guide you about filling up of application form. Do follow the instructions carefully. It involves six steps in online mode. Step 1. Part A of step 1 deals with basic business information of the applicant. The applicant is expected to fill in the details like enterprise name, location of the enterprise, etc. Constitution The applicant can choose from a list of six options depending on the nature of the enterprise. Available space for business The applicant needs to enter whether the unit is located in leased, owned or rented premises. Enterprise PAN number The permanent account number of the enterprise has to be entered. For the propriety concern, the PAN of the proprietor may be entered. Being a mandatory field, it is of utmost importance that the applicant fills it properly. It is a unique 10 character alphanumeric identifier issued to all judicial entities identifiable under the Indian Income Tax Act. Next, New Business Enterprise. The applicant has to select whether it is a new enterprise or whether it is an existing unit. First Time Entrepreneur The applicant can select whether this is his first business venture or whether he has been involved in ventures before. Industry Type The applicant can choose the type of industry that the new or existing unit is involved in. He or she has the option to choose from manufacturing, services, trading or agriculture allied. And then we come to industry group. The industry group has to be mentioned here. In case the unit is already in existence, the applicant needs to enter details of the activity. Proposed. The subgroup under the above mentioned entry has to be entered here. CIN number. This is applicable only if the enterprise is a company. The corporate identity number or company CIN number is a 21 digit alphanumeric number issued to every company incorporated in India when it gets registered with the registrar of companies located in various states of India. Filling up GST number is mandatory for existing unit. Next, the applicant needs to enter the date from which the new unit proposes to begin its activities or the date from which the existing unit has been operational. Registration number is mandatory only for a registered unit. Registration Act is mandatory for a registered unit and its registration number should sync with its respective act. Whether the unit is zero defect or zero effect rated. After the assessments and evaluation, Quality Council of India would provide final rating to the MSMEs engaged in manufacturing. In case any further updation is made by you in each step, the same could be validated by clicking the button Validate Page available in the bottom of the page. Step 2 is self-explanatory and so further explanation is not necessary. And then we come to Step 3. Part C of Step 3 deals with associate concerns. Applicants are expected to fill in the details of the associate concerns, if any, along with address, current banking details, as well as the stakeholding of the promoter who is the applicant in those concerns. Associate concern, as in relation to another concern, means a proprietorship, firm, company, in which that other concern has a significant influence. And then we come to Nature of Associate Concern. The applicant can choose from over six options. Extent of Interest in Associate Concern. The applicant needs to fill in details of the involvement with the Associate Concern. For example, shareholding of the promoter in the Associate Concern. Part D of Step 3 deals with existing banking and credit facilities. Applicant has to fill up his savings account information. 
this is a mandatory field and filling it is essential to further proceed with the application process. A current account also known as financial account is a type of deposit account maintained by individuals who carry out significantly higher number of transactions with banks on a regular basis. A cash credit loan is a short term source of finance having a tenure of up to one year. Under the short term finance option, the bank offers its applicant to take a loan up to a certain limit. Depending on their credit history, to fulfill their working capital requirement. A term loan is simply a loan that is given for a fixed duration of time and must be repaid in regular installments. These loans usually extended for a longer duration of time which may range from 1 year to 10 or even 30 years. Rate of interest charged under these loans may be on a fixed or floating basis which will vary with market fluctuations. Term loans are mostly used as small business loans. Letter of Credit or Bank Guarantee A letter of credit is an assured form of payment which is widely used by businesses in trade transactions. In an LC transaction, a bank undertakes to make payment to a seller or beneficiary on submission of documents stipulated in the LC. A bank guarantee is a guarantee from a bank in which the bank would fulfill the obligations of the debtor if the debtor fails to do so. Bank guarantees is thus a mechanism wherein a third party performs a due diligence and accepts responsibility on behalf of the debtor for a consideration. Bank guarantees are part of doing business and is required for various business transactions. Next, the applicant is required to fill in details of the lenders from whom the facilities have been availed. Amount of limit availed The amount owed on a debt as on a particular date. It basically stands for debt that has not been repaid in full. For example, if an entrepreneur borrows 20 lakh rupees and has paid back 3 lakhs, the outstanding is 17 lakhs. Details of the security provided while availing the existing credit facilities need to be entered here. The type of asset, whether it is standard, substandard, doubtful or loss needs to be mentioned in this field. The rate of interest on the existing credit facilities need to be entered. The terms and conditions governing the existing credit facilities like tenure of the loan, penalties in case of delayed payment, rate of interest etc. needs to be entered in this field. Part E deals with the credit facilities that the applicant wants to avail. It is bifurcated in working capital, term loan and letter of credit or bank guarantee credit. The applicant needs to enter the amounts corresponding to the type of facility. The applicant needs to type in the purpose for which the loan is being taken. When an asset acquired by the borrower under a project is offered to the lender as security for the financed amount, then that asset is called primary security. In simple terms, it is the thing that is being financed. In case cost of land is forming part of the project, the same would be considered as part of primary security. If the bank or lender feels that the primary security is not enough to cover the risk associated with the loan, it asks for an additional security, which is called collateral security. It guarantees a borrower's performance on a debt obligation. In this field, the applicant has to select yes or no based on whether collateral is being offered. The type of collateral security that is being offered, say for example residential flat, has to be entered here. On selecting yes for whether collateral security is offered, two more subparts get activated within the application form third party guarantee other collateral security a guaranteed loan is a loan guaranteed by a third party in case the borrower defaults here the applicant needs 
to fill in the details of the third party guarantor. For individuals, net worth or wealth refers to an individual's net economic position, the value of the individual's assets minus liabilities. The applicant needs to select the checkbox and add details in case he or she is offering additional collateral security. Next, the applicant needs to enter the number of employees that he or she may employ for his unit. Part F of Step 4 deals with future estimates. In this part, applicants are expected to fill in the details considering future business generation in mind. The applicant needs to enter the period for which his business has been running. He or she can choose from a list of four options ranging from less than one year to greater than equal to three years. Net sales are the amount of sales generated by a unit after the deduction of returns, allowances for damaged or missing goods or any discounts allowed. The sales number reported on a company's financial statements is a net sales number reflecting these deductions. The profit of a unit after operating expenses and all other charges including taxes, interest and depreciation have been deducted from total revenue also called net earnings or net income. If expenses and charges exceed revenue, the company incurs a net loss. Capital is the money brought in by the promoter for setting up of a unit. Utilized capacity is the actual level of output of a unit. The capacity utilization rate measures the proportion of potential economic output that is actually realized. Displayed as a percentage, capacity utilization levels give insight into the overall slack that is in a unit at a given point in time. It is calculated as utilized capacity or installed capacity multiplied by 100. Installed capacity is the maximum level of output that a unit can sustain to make a product or provide a service. The applicant can fill in estimates for the current year and has the option to give estimates up to the 7th year. The current and the first year projections are mandatory. And then we come to Column G – Banking Capital – Fill up details of cash credit limit applied for with projections. Column H – If you need a term loan, Fill up details of machinery or equipment, its purpose, other details asked for, the cost and the amount of loan required. Then you have to fill up the desired repayment period in months. In case the applicant belongs to SCST category, he or she has the option to opt for special credit linked capital subsidy scheme or SCLCSS. The checkbox has to be activated to enable the option. The scheme under National SCST Hub Scheme will be applicable to existing as well as new SCST owned micro and small enterprises and will be monitored by Ministry of MSME. The beneficiary unit shall remain in commercial production for a period of at least three years after installation of eligible plant and machinery on which subsidy under this scheme has been availed. The applicant needs to select the type of business the unit is associated with to be eligible for SCL CSS. Add more option can be used in case more than one machinery is eligible for SCL CSS subsidy and the requisite details can be added for the same. Net block is the gross block less accumulated depreciation on assets. Gross block is the sum total of all assets of the company valued at their cost of acquisition. This is inclusive of the depreciation that is to be charged on each asset. Net block is actually what the assets are worth to the company. Current assets are a balance sheet account that represents the value of all assets 
that can reasonably be expected to be converted into cash within one year. Current assets include cash and cash equivalents, accounts receivable, inventory, marketable securities, prepaid expenses and other liquid assets that can be readily converted to cash. Current liabilities are a company's debts or obligations that are due within one year, appearing on the company's balance sheet and include short-term debt, accounts payable, accrued liabilities and other debts. A term loan is a monetary loan that is repaid in regular payments over a set period of time. Term loans usually last between 1 and 10 years but may last as long as 30 years in some cases. Share capital consists of all funds raised by a company in exchange for shares of either common or preferred shares of stock. Reserves are the funds earmarked for a specific purpose which the company intends to use in future. Surplus is where the profits of the company reside. Net worth Summation of share capital and reserves and surplus. Total sales revenue, sometimes called gross sales, is the total amount of sales in a given period. Gross profit is the profit a company makes after deducting the costs associated with making and selling its products or the costs associated with providing its services. Gross profit is equal to revenue minus cost of goods sold. Depreciation is an accounting method of allocating the cost of a tangible asset over its useful life. An interest expense is the cost incurred by an entity for borrowed funds. Interest expense is a non-operating expense shown on the income statement. It represents interest payable on any borrowings, bonds, loans, convertible debt or lines of credit. Operating profit is an accounting figure that measures the profit earned from a firm's normal core business operations, thus excluding deductions of interest and taxes. Net profit The profit of a company after operating expenses and all other charges including taxes, interest and depreciation have been deducted from total revenue, also called net earnings or net income. The internal accruals of a business are the accumulation of retained earnings and depreciation charges. Next, the applicant has to fill in the date by which the project will be complete. Total value for which subsidy is claimed. The applicant has to fill in the requisite value. Add more. This tab can be used by the applicant to add more machinery in case multiple machines are eligible for SEL CSS subsidy. Part 1 of Step 5 deals with statutory obligations. Statutory obligations are compliances that need to be followed for conducting business. Shops and Establishment Act governs the working conditions and rights of workers engaged in the unorganized sector. This license is mandatory for all business entities even if you are working from home. In recent times, for boosting new enterprises in the country, the Government of India has initiated the Udyog Aadhaar registration process. The applicant needs to fill two forms, Entrepreneur Memorandum 1 and Entrepreneur Memorandum 2, instead of 11 different types of forms that were required earlier. The Udyog Aadhaar registration is a completely online process which is totally free of cost. Industries registered with Udyog Aadhaar become entitled to receive the benefits of several government schemes such as subsidies, easy loan approvals etc. Udyog Aadhaar Memorandum is the registration form wherein the MSME certifies its existence and provides mandatory information such as owner's Aadhaar details, bank account details etc. After submitting this form, an acknowledgement form is released to the registered email of the applicant containing the unique 
उद्योग आधार नंबर ड्रग लाइसेंस इज अ परमिशन ग्रांटेड बाय द कॉम्पिटेंट अथॉरिटी अंडर ड्रग्स एंड कॉस्मेटिक एक्ट टू कैरी आउट अ बिजनेस कंसर्निंग ड्रग्स और मेडिसिन और कॉस्मेटिक्स लेटेस्ट इनकम टैक्स रिटर्न फाइल्ड एन इनकम टैक्स रिटर्न इज द टैक्स फॉर्म और फॉर्म्स यूज टू फाइल इनकम टैक्स विद इन द इनकम टैक्स डिपार्टमेंट द टैक्स रिटर्न इज यूजली इन अ प्री डिफाइंड वर्कशीट फॉर्मैट वेर द इनकम फिगर्स यूज टू कैलकुलेट द टैक्स लाइबिलिटी आर रिटर्न इन टू द डॉक्यूमेंट्स दम सेल्स रिपोर्ट इफ एनी स्टैचुटरी ड्यूज आर पेंडिंग टू बी सेटल्ड the applicant can select from yes no and not applicable depending on the status the applicant has to ensure that every document he is uploading is self attested that is it must have his or her signature the applicant needs to upload balance sheet of the past 3 years a balance sheet is a financial statement that summarizes a unit's assets liabilities and shareholders equity at a specific point in time moa memorandum of association is a legal document which is prepared in the formation and registration process of a limited liability company it is called the charter of the company memorandum of association defines the company's relationship with its shareholders it is the most important document of a company as it states the objects of the company for which it is formed it also contains the powers of the company within which it can act an extremely significant subsidiary to the memorandum of association the article of association constitutes all the empowering laws norms rules and regulations for the management to control the internal affairs of a company together with the memorandum of association The article of association defines the outline of the company constitution. Partnership deed is an agreement between the partners of a firm that outlines the terms and conditions of partnership among the partners. An account statement is a periodic summary of account activity with a beginning date and an ending date. And then we come to a projected balance sheet. lists specific account balances on a business assets liabilities and equity for a specified future time the sales of the unit up to the date of application needs to be uploaded proposed project report the unit seeking financial assistance for implementation of its business idea is required to prepare a project report covering certain important aspects of the project proof of rent agreement needs to be uploaded a rental agreement is an official contract signed between the owner of a property and the tenant who wishes to take temporary possession of the property for a said period of time also called a rent deed and lease deed proof of clearance from pollution control board consent to establish and consent to operate including the category of industry from the respective state pollution control board needs to be uploaded proof of msme registration udyog aadhar memorandum registration copy to be uploaded in case the unit has availed facilities from bankers proof of them has to be uploaded copy of gst return needs to be uploaded statements from bankers regarding whether the asset is standard needs to be uploaded next the applicant can select the credit information agency of which he or she possesses the credit report and can upload the same the applicant can select the rating agency of which he or she possesses the rating report and can upload the same the applicant can select the check box in order to choose the preferred lender of his choice As soon as the check box is activated additional fields get activated next the applicant can select the lender category which ranges from public sector banks 
to fintechs and can choose the lender which he or she prefers to get the loan sanctioned. Step 6 is the declaration which you must read carefully and agree to all the clauses and terms. Confirm your acceptance and then submit the application form. You can also save the form for your perusal. Thank you for your attention. We extend complete support to all Udyamis and wish them success in their endeavors.